Hi everyone, I am text to speech bot David, filling in for Brian Mullins the Fox. Now, to celebrate the Roast Games 5th anniversary as not just a topic of discussion that ended in 2021, but also a discussion that's happening post Roast Game wise now. Which adds an extra year to the other four. Let's get into the post Roast Game aftermath era. Let's talk about the financial implications on how I theorize the death of traditional Christmas dinner in the coming years. Mainly, episodes 1, 2, 4 and 14. Hello there everybody, I am your host, Detective Brian Mullins the Fox. The first mini-series section within the series known as the post-roast game theory, known as statistics, in which this episode is part one out of three, and this entire season of the post-roast game theory, it's going to result in around 20 or so episodes overall. Let's start things off with calories. Let's compare Thanksgiving to Christmas to tell what the difference really is, or better yet, was. According to an ABC News article from November 23rd, 2016, published by Morgan Korn, it reads as followed, thanks to a TTS bot known as David. Take it away, David. Thanksgiving is a time for family, friends, football, and feasting. The average American will consume a hefty 3,000 calories on Thanksgiving for dinner alone. Drinks, dessert, and appetizers can bring the total calorie count to 4,500, according to the Calorie Control Council, an industry group. The most delicious Thanksgiving dishes mashed potatoes, green bean casserole, stuffing and pecan pie are loaded with sugar or fat or both. The Calorie Control Council estimates that one cup of mashed potatoes contains 238 calories and 8 grams of fat. A cup of green bean casserole comes in at 143 calories and 8 grams of fat, and a slice of pecan pie adds a whopping 456 calories and 21 grams of fat. Hunter Lewis, editor of Cooking Light magazine, concedes that Thanksgiving can throw your diet for a loop, but he argued that the spirit of Thanksgiving matters more than the food. Be engaged at the table and be grateful and thankful, he told ABC News. Enjoy yourself and don't feel guilty about the food. Lewis, however, warned against indulging after the holiday. Don't let one day of feasting turn into five days, he said. For those who refuse to give up their favorite Thanksgiving dishes, Lewis said there are ways to make them more heart healthy. Eliminating sausage from stuffing, which Hunter called a fat bomb, cuts down on calories. Worthy fillers include apples, squash and mushrooms, he said. Replacing the butter in mashed potatoes with turkey stock and Greek yogurt provides flavor without clogging arteries and foregoing baked brie appetizers and cheese platters with fresh seafood, such as shrimp cocktail, allows for more calories later, he said. Susan Albers, a clinical psychologist at the Cleveland Clinic and the author of Eating Mindfully and 50 Ways to Soothe Yourself Without Food, notes that eating an additional 3,500 calories will lead to a weight gain of one pound. Government guidelines on estimated calorie intake vary based on age, gender, and physical activity level, but for a woman 26 to 50 years old who engages in moderate physical activity, the recommend daily calorie count is 2000. For men who engage in moderate exercise and are 26 to 45, the recommended daily caloric intake is 2600. That number drops to 2,400 for men 46 to 65. Albers suggests focusing on favorites for Thanksgiving dinner and eating mindfully. Mindful eating is the opposite of what we traditionally think of on Thanksgiving, she said. Consciously choosing what you want to eat, 
eating it slowly, savoring each bite. It's not about eating as much as you can. Mindful eating teaches you it's perfectly fine to have your favorite slice of pie if you make room for it. Eating mindfully can also take the pressure off losing the extra pounds. According to a Cornell University study published in September in the New England Journal of Medicine, half the weight gained around the holidays can stick around until the summer months or beyond. The average American's weight rose 0.2% during the Thanksgiving holiday, the researchers found. In the 10 days after Christmas, Americans on average weighed 0.4% more than they did the 10 days before Christmas. Eating mindfully matters, but so does moving. Albers advises walking after dinner and even exercising before the turkey is sliced at the dinner table. The best advice is prevention, she said. Lee Jordan, a certified health coach and senior behavior change specialist with the American Council on Exercise, agrees that exercising pre and post Thanksgiving should become a yearly holiday ritual. To burn 1,000 calories, a 185 pound person would need to jog for 90 minutes at 12 miles per hour non stop for nearly 7.5 miles, according to Jordan. If you're a walker, prepare to hit the pavement for over 3.5 hours at 3 miles per hour to burn the same number of calories. The ACE has a tool on its website to help individuals calculate how much exercise is needed to burn off calorie amounts. Exercising prior will help jumpstart metabolism and, more importantly, provides a tangible way for a person to declare to himself or herself that they are committed to their health and wellness, he told ABC News in an email. People tend to significantly overestimate the amount of calories they have burned, so if they choose to frame their pre-Thanksgiving exercise as a means to feast and overindulge, they will likely not have a healthy outcome, he added. However, when a person chooses to frame the same pre-Thanksgiving exercise not as a tool to rationalize overindulging but rather as an investment in their own joy slash wellness, the outcome is usually one of empowerment rather than regret. Of course, there are some contradictory consumption statistics, like ones that are more focused on how much you'll weigh after Christmas than Thanksgiving. Other articles say different numbers and percentages and come up with different caloric estimates. Now let's let another TTS bot, known as Mark, read the second one for me from Eat This Not That in an article from 2020. Let's go, Mark. How much weight could you actually gain on Thanksgiving? Just how much will your day-long marathon of indulgence show up on the scale? Our pilgrim forefathers may have been Puritans, but the Thanksgiving traditions they left for us are anything but pure. Thanksgiving is basically a celebration of debauchery, drowned in gravy and covered with marshmallows. Delicious, yes. But not necessarily the healthiest. In fact, between your standard morning breakfast and the liberal ladles of lard for dessert, your feast could cost you 4,000 calories or more, says Lisa Moskovitz, RD, founder of the New York Nutrition Group. And if you're the type who looks at nutrition as a math equation, you already know that it takes just 3,500 calories to add an entire pound of fat to your body. If you're looking for healthier habits to adopt ASAP, try out any of the 21 best healthy cooking hacks of all time. So will you gain a whole pound on Turkey Day? Might you gain even more? Before you press the panic button, Though, let's look at the science. See, no matter how many calories you eat, you're simultaneously burning those calories. To gain one pound of fat in a day, you would have to eat 3,500 calories more than what you burned off, Moskovitz explains. The average person fries about 1,600 calories a day, 
just keeping their heart beating, their lungs breathing, and their eyes rolling at the 400th rendition of your uncle's turkey jokes. This brings us to the burning question. How much do you need to eat on Thanksgiving to actually gain weight? In order to gain a pound on Thanksgiving, you would have to eat a total of 5,100 calories of turkey and pie. That means you'd have to eat two turkey legs with the skin on, six ounces turkey breast with the skin on, two cups mashed potatoes made with butter and whole milk, plus one cup turkey gravy, one half cup cornbread stuffing, two slices canned cranberry sauce, one cup candied sweet potatoes with marshmallow, one cup Brussels sprouts with walnuts, one cup green bean casserole, two crescent rolls, one piece pumpkin pie with one cup vanilla ice cream, two pieces pecan pie each with two tablespoon whipped cream, one slice apple pie, that's 5130 calories. But let's be realistic here chances are you won't actually come near that total. Still, when you step on the scale before bedtime, you might think you've packed on some serious poundage in just one day. On average, people could expect to see an extra 2 to 4 pounds staring back to them after their Thanksgiving feast, says Moskovitz. But those numbers are actually a combination of the weight of the food and drink sitting in your belly, plus a bit of extra water weight. Your aunt's famous stuffing and your grandmother's legendary mashed potatoes are to thank for that. These dishes, among other turkey day favorites, are typically loaded with sodium, which causes the body to hold on to extra fluid, and can increase blood pressure and the risk of stroke, too. The good news, though? Those extra pounds aren't staying. For a quick slim down, get a sweat going at the gym the next day to help flush out the excess water and relieve some of the bloat, suggests Moskovitz. Aim to drink at least 6-8 ounce glasses of water and munch on potassium-packed produce like sweet potatoes, or any of these 8 foods high in potassium, and calcium-rich foods like yogurt. These nutrients will help flush out the excess sodium so you can slip back into your skinny jeans within a few days. Articles in general aren't necessarily reliable for these statistics for both holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now we'll go to Statista, Nielsen, and Van den Bos Verma et al. In spite of Thanksgiving having contradictory and conflicting calorie estimates and consumption statistics in some articles and so, there is actual data that is somewhat reliable past that, according to Statista and Nielsen alone. This Statista chart, which used Nielsen as the source, is from 2017. The first year that begins the post-roast game era, we are solely focused on meat choice. Like for example, 365 million pounds of turkey bought and consumed on Thanksgiving, then 77 million pounds of roast hams purchased and consumed on Thanksgiving alone. Let's do the math here. The average weight of a roast turkey is 16 pounds, so if I divided 365 million pounds by 16, I will get this answer. 22,812,500 turkeys were eaten on Thanksgiving. Let's do the same with ham. 77 million pounds of ham divided by 6 pounds or the average weight of a shank of roast ham, according to the USDA, will get 12,833,333 hams that were bought and consumed on Thanksgiving. Note that we're not focused on waste statistics, we're only focused on purchase and consumption statistics. So you can take these with a grain of salt. This is one of the many selected items. These are two of the selected items the week before and the week of Thanksgiving 2017. 
Even though over 22 million turkeys were eaten on Thanksgiving, around 12 million of them are wasted every year. So even if they consumed most of it, they still would have thrown it away essentially, wasting it in the process. The same goes with ham, but a little or a lot less than turkey. As a side note, according to a statistics survey from um, this year, 2021, 81% of Americans believe that Thanksgiving is the most important national holiday in the United States, let alone the most important slash wonderful time of the year. Christmas comes in second with only 77%. Now let's get into Christmas, shall we? But instead of using the same old debunked statistics, like the 22 million number for turkey and the 318 million number for the amount of hams consumed according to a fake news time.com article from 2014 to actually estimate how many turkeys and hams consumers in America and Canada ate on Christmas during the post roast game era I will do the math for you according to the hammer turkey steel man video I made this year in 2021 as I'm recording this this is premiering in 2022 by the way you need a 16 pound turkey to feed 11 people. The estimated amount that Americans eat turkey on Christmas was according to the 2019 numbers as of January 2nd, 2020 for Christmas, 1,876,296 of them. But now for 2021, the number slightly increased and the percentage of Americans that ate turkey on Christmas in the post roast game era, by the way, is still 11%, which means that the numbers are stagnating for turkeys on Christmas in the post roast game era. So from 2017 to 2021, the percentage of Americans that ate turkey on Christmas in the post roast game era stayed consistently at 11%. For ham, on the other hand, it takes a 16 pound ham to feed about 10 people. But the average weight of a shank of roast ham bone in is about six pounds. The percentage of Americans that ate ham on Christmas in the post roast game era went from 10% all the way down to 4%. It was 10% in 2019, but now it's 4% in 2021. A 6% decline within the span of two years. Assuming that this trend is legitimate, in 2017, the percentage was presumably 4% due to the calculations. It went from 4% in 2017 went up by six points by 2019, and went right back down to 4% by 2021. Indicate that this comeback trend is dying from the very start. This is unbelievable. This will be part of the big prediction in part three within the three episode long segment known as statistics. This could be a huge factor in predicting the death of traditional Christmas dinner. Now let's analyze waste statistics. In general, China became the country with the most total food waste per year at 91,646,213 tons. America fell down from first place in 2011 to third place in 2021. What a difference a decade made. 10 long years. Obviously, we went from being in the roast game era to the post roast game era. That and also China when it comes to COVID-19 and its ever growing variants like Delta and Omicron spanning from places like South Africa and India. The Christmas food waste in America and Canada somehow improved a lot during the post roast game era instead of all the hams and turkeys being wasted in both America and Canada to at least a good portion of them being wasted. It's still horrible news for consumers, but it's a hell of an improvement. Let's go on a short rant before I recap everything and end this episode. I cannot believe that the comeback to turkey and ham for Christmas was meant to be a short-lived era, not just because of COVID-19 and its ever-growing amount of variants running up and down the Greek alphabet, but also because when Donald Trump was president, his messaging about being allowed to say Merry Christmas again proudly had some positive impact in consumption of these two meat choices. Now that not only that Donald Trump is out of office, not only that the economy's growth rate is slowing down, not only that people just lost faith in the holiday known as Christmas in general, but also Thanksgiving is more important than Christmas now. People have somehow become a bit more reasonable now than they were four years ago. I don't know where we or Canadians will be in the next half decade. This series 
known as the post roast game theory, will not end until the death of traditional Christmas dinner actually happens officially, presumably in the next five to six or so years. This is possibly the worst news for traditional Christmas dinner. So let's recap. Thanksgiving is much more documented in meat choice consumption statistics and even waste statistics than Christmas. When it comes to consumption stats, 11% of Americans ate turkey on Christmas consistently for four years between 2017 and 2021. But when it comes to ham, the percentage of Americans went from 4% in 2017, bounced back up to 10% by 2019, and all the way back down to 4% in 2021. Due to the pandemic, people losing faith in Christmas and focusing more of their faith in and on to Thanksgiving and the stagnating economy or inflation. Waste statistics improved for Christmas but stayed the same for Thanksgiving. This will play a particularly large role in predicting the death of traditional Christmas dinner in both the United States of America and Canada. This has been the first part of the first three-part segment of episodes, three of them each segment, of the post roast game theory. I am Detective Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. See you then. Hi everyone, I am Detective Brian Mullins the Fox. Welcome to the second episode of the first season of the post roast game theory. We are going to go over yearly child deaths in the post roast game era and Canadian Christmas dinner consumption slash waste statistics to see if we can analyze the same trend but in a different country. In the post roast game era, the likelihood of the death toll adding up from 2018, 19, 20, 21, even late 2017 is unlikely. Unlike the video I proved the roast game death toll in, which is the only way that it counts. It's just not happening anymore in America and Canada and has not happened in five years. After Christmas, of course. On the next episode, we will simply recap the stuff we learned from the first three episode segment known as statistics then we will go into another three episode segment on what we learned in all four seasons of the roast game theory let's assume that canada is following the same trend as america when it comes to christmas consumption stats and waste stats unlike thanksgiving in canada let's assume that canada is also following trends like going right back to turkey or ham as the centerpiece of christmas dinner maybe a year early but most of them were finished Finishing up eating children anyway in 2016 up in Canada. If Canada is following the same path but is making a much better recovery than America, then we are screwed even more. Maybe for them, Christmas dinner can come screaming back to life again, like it once did in 1997, or hell, even better. But don't always trust surveys 100%. Let's read a Green Book article published in 2020 by Anwar El Haji. Are surveys reliable? Survey research only makes sense if and only if people honestly report their beliefs and preferences. References. The value of survey research is directly linked to this fundamental assumption. It's a fact of life, however, that we have the ability to misrepresent ourselves, and often there are reasons to do so. For example, you're willing to pay for a new luxury watch will probably depend on who's asking. You might overstate the amount to impress friends while you would downplay it to negotiate a good deal with the salesman. Because people are free to misrepresent themselves, it raises the question of whether surveys can provide an accurate view about what people truly believe and value. Sadly, there's solid evidence that surveys are unreliable and give a skewed picture. The problem is so systematic that there is a whole body of scientific studies focused on what's called the hypothetical bias. Can surveys be fixed? The root of this problem is that talk is cheap. In a survey, there are no consequences to misrepresenting yourself. The problem becomes even worse because we like to tell what people want to hear, also known as acquiescence bias. 
The end result is that survey measurements of beliefs and preferences are often significantly biased. Compare this to making a purchase. If you buy something that you don't want, you're going to regret making that decision. So there's a strong incentive to make decisions that correspond to your true beliefs and preferences. Actions speak louder than words. This does not mean that all surveys are bad. There are no reasons to misrepresent, for example, your gender or highest completed level of education. In fact, the answers to these types of questions can be verified objectively. However, questions that require value judgments or reporting beliefs are susceptible to bias because these are inherently subjective. The science of humans is the only field in which the subject matter is able to talk back. So it's quite tempting to simply trust what people claim about themselves. This shouldn't, however, prevent researchers from maintaining a high standard to get a reliable view of the world. Why Americans and Canadians, let alone families in general, lied about what they ate as the centerpiece of Christmas dinner between 1998 and 2016 can be separated into three likely reasons slash scenarios. One, they lied because they weren't 100% sure on what they would eat ahead of time as the centerpiece of Christmas dinner. The reason they lied is not malicious in nature and is simply as human as can be. Two, they lied because they knew they would get attention from local or mainstream media, not eating anything what they described on Christmas beyond human, even sometimes subhumanly, or the most likely reason slash scenario is being knowingly deceptive, knowing that you wouldn't eat ham or turkey even if you were willing enough to buy it, while being silent on what has happened to children instead of turkeys or pigs. The most likely answer, like I said before, is number three, because the roast game is the biggest factor in all of this. It's literally not a conspiracy theory at all. It's a fact. Hey, complicit and complacent families, if the centerpiece of Christmas dinner is more special than children, why would you throw all of them away only just to sit idly by and do nothing when children who needed you most disappear? Hello everybody, I am Detective Brian Mullins the Fox, and we are going to talk about what we learned, in essence, about the roast game theory in a way, where we put it into different words, not just analyzing the same data over and over again in the second three episode segment of the first season of the post roast game theory. For the first part of this three episode segment, we will talk about what this series meant to theorize the death of traditional Christmas dinner in the post-roast game era. Here are five important things to discuss in this episode. One, how we can use what we learned from the past to predict the future. Number two, how inconsistencies, statistical and otherwise, can permanently tarnish the nature of their absolution. Number three, how it tarnishes the history of Christmas, let alone traditional Christmas dinner. Number four, how it could lead all of us to abandon this old, archaic, quote-unquote, tradition at some point in the near or distant future. And finally, number five, how all of these things can amalgamate into the absolute state of the post-roast game era. Let's explain the first one. The way we found the trend in all the four seasons of the roast game theory is that we analyzed the time frame and timeline by calculating each case in a very specific way during the Rose Game era, where these cases took place. The Rose Game era timeline, of course, being between from 1998 to 2016 Christmas-wise, and from November 17th, 1998 to June 11th, 2017, which was closest to to summer, hence why I said the summer of 2017 for the past few years at this point. 
one, calories, two, self-conflicting slash contradictory and somewhat misleading, quote unquote, consumption statistics. Number three, Christmas food waste statistics. Number four, the roast game death toll in both two countries. Number five, analyzing roast preparation time. Number six, literal forensic evidence. Number seven, anatomy and meat choice. Number eight, the Canadian roast game slash Canadian roast game theory. Number nine, the real life example of the roast game theory. And finally, number 10, the evolution of the roast game theory itself. Now let's talk about the post roast game timeline. In a sense, only contained a few important events, phenomena that occurred in my personal experience on the internet and sort of IRL. Number one, debates. Debate.org and the would be, could be debate that turned out to be a debacle in late 2018. Number two, internet drama on YouTube, Discord, Funny Junk, Debate.org, and others. And number three, a first ever interview with me and a few others. Let's play the entire thing just for the sake of context, because I already edited it and added some royalty free background footage anyway. So let's go. Hello? Pretty good. So, I, I, me and my friends, we uh, we wanted to interview today. We uh, we found your channel and we we found it very interesting. And I just we figured that we would just ask you some questions. Is that okay with you? Yes, go ahead. So, I think the first question is that we should ask is, what is a fact about you that not many people who watch your channel know? Not many people know that I have high-functioning autism. Many people don't know that I have this sort of ability to memorize a lot of things most of the time. Hmm. That's cool. So, your first video is a video of you making green tea. How do you feel about this video today and like how much you've changed since your very first video? Well, I find that video to be very interesting. Yeah, I like green tea. Um, how it changed me over the past three years, it has uh, shown me how I can make YouTube videos and actually uh, socialize with a group of people. This isn't. Is green tea your favorite tea? Oh yeah, well it's one of my favorites. I have I have numerous favorite green tea uh, uh, types of tea. There's a uh, Earl Grey. There's cinnamon tea. There's. That's green tea with chamomile that's very interesting that's that's pretty cool how did how did you come up with your first summer um do you remember i don't remember too much but it was just uh i just started in 2019 with the customized avatar i started with a chibi mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. i went with the dull divine model then later a the the Saji model I, the color scheme, I, I thought of a cool custom color scheme with the uh, light tannish fur with maroon hair and hazel eyes because in real life my uh, eyes are hazel. Mm. That's Oh, that's cool. Hey, I like hazel Red eyes. Uh, so on May 10th, 2018, you made... What the? What, what's funny? Someone's in my room right I'll now. I'll just read the okay, question. Anyways, Brand. on May 10th, 2018, you made a video called Thank you for 100 subscribers. A message from Brian Mullins the Fox. Uh, was that your first big goal? And how, do you feel when, how did you feel once you reached it? And what is your next big goal? I felt great when I, I first... I, I felt great when I first hit 100 subscribers on that day. Um, my goal then was to get up to 1,000 or more subs by the end of the decade. Um, well, it, 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 it gradually grew. Throughout this uh, year of 2018 and 19, I went from around 100 subs to close to 765 subs at the turn of 2020. That's nice. Right now you're at like 11,000 subs. 11.2 thousand, yes. 
Yeah. Um, uh, I got a question. So, on multiple accounts, you have, you have stated that Muppets from Space is one of your favorite films. Uh, could you tell us why? Yeah, it is my favorite movie. It's uh, because... I've watched the movie numerous times, and uh, the music is quite interesting. And what what really got me feeling nostalgic is the VHS opening. Mm. Yeah, I noticed like some of your stuff on your channel kind of like represents like like it's kind of like old VHS H, uh, VHS style openings and stuff. Uh, what was so interesting about the music? Because I, I noticed you do post some music on your channel, and I was wondering more about that as well. Yeah, it was the Stuart Little uh, promo. He used a, a song called Jump, Jive, and Whale, and at the end of the trailer, it uses a, uh, a la- uh, an extended ending loop where the trumpet squeals, and then at the end of it, it all winds down. So I kind of I kind of got a little joke question right here. Uh, so around March 31st, 2018, you made a video titled "I'm How to Basic," and I just wanted to ask, are you How to Basic? Yeah, I'm How to Basic. Haha. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> uh, out of all your videos on your channel, which one do you think is your favorite out of all of them? Um. I don't think I really have too much of a favorite, but there, there's just so many videos I can uh, I can think of that I could call my favorite. But I think all of my videos are pretty good. Which one do you think you worked the hardest on? Um. Well, I don't know. I I can't remember. There are numerous times Dude, where there I there are a lot of videos on your channel, and I also wanted to ask you like. I was looking, you upload like almost every hour. How do you manage to do that? Shotcut usually takes a long time and I have uh, plenty of time to upload when Shotcut's ready. Sometimes Shotcut may mm-hmm. take few or several hours, if not a whole day w- with some reversed videos. Pro, uh, like go- going over mm-hmm. two hours long. God, that reminds me of when I use Shotcut. Mm. Use- uh, that's what you use, Shotcut? Yes. For all your videos? Yes. That's awesome. I actually used Shotcut for like maybe a year or two. So, you yeah. said in one of your videos that you became a furry around February 22nd, 2018. How has this had like an effect on your life, like your entire life as a whole? Well, it has had a mostly positive effect. I have learned to uh, sort of uh, find my limits with that community and uh, late 2018 was a really good example of finding my limit mm. what what uh, do you have any uh, big projects planned or are you just you know keep uploading regular videos mostly I keep uploading regular videos mm. so this is a pretty big question and I was. We found this thing. It's called. Uh, you may. It's like. Uh, I don't know really what it is, and we were wondering about it. Uh, the roast game. It's a. Uh, what is it? Is it like you say the roast game is fact? Uh, we want to learn more about it, like because we were curious. Yeah. Yeah. So. Can you describe to us what it is? It You've is. Been dying to know. It that. is the fact. It is the fact that. Uh, I've used this uh, claim to uh, describe it many, many times, and I said it's the fact that families ate their own children after slaughtering them for not believing in Christmas. That's what it was all about, and uh, it was start from a hypothetical, and it uh, went farther than that after years gone by. So, this when is you true. You believe like- this? One day, what? I, I so- yeah, let me know that. No, no, you can go, you can go. Like, my, okay. my, my, my. Uh, so I was curious, like, this is true, like, you believe this? Like, this is, a. Because I, I was curious if this was, like, you know, it's just purely a hypothetical and, like, a question, like, you've been asking about. Well, it, it, it's uh, not just a hypothetical, and I mostly believe it's true, even though sometimes I don't believe some things 100%. Sometimes I fact-check myself just to make sure I'm correct. I usually do that every once in a while. Yeah. So, like, you say that families eat their children? 
Is that what it is? Cause yeah, that's a bit of a hypothetical, or not hypothetical, uh, hyperbolic statement, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, during, uh, during like Christmas and stuff like that? Yeah, between 1998 and 2016. So they don't do it anymore? No, they don't do it anymore. Uh, how did you find out about this? Like, when did you first come up with this idea? It was uh, on October 20th, 2017. I started debating this uh, well tester hypothetical on debate.org. It was, it was almost four years ago. Mm, that's interesting. You're very good at remembering dates, I guess. Yeah. Because I don't. If I would think of something like that, I'd just probably remember the only the, the year, but you can remember in month. That's very, I, that's I, very I, cool. I would probably say, like, oh, around 2016, around 2018 time. <clears throat> yeah, so. Do you know why people stopped? Is it because you know, they, they like found it too like crazy? Yeah, they found it too crazy. They just decided to go back to normal tradition and like with the ham and turkey. Because people so, people usually like have that? a change of heart. I lost my brother yeah. to the roast game. Oh, shit. <laughs> Did you? I think he's joking. I know. <laughs> uh, he's pulling he's a little just. But... I'm kind of, kind of curious about this. So was it like more of a cult thing? Like people like all around, they, they were connected to each other. Oh no, it, it wasn't like, really. It was... wasn't really a cult thing. What what is it like? What like why did they do this? I don't. I, that's why I don't understand it. Well, it could be for a myriad of reasons, but I'd like to generalize it is uh, as in uh, for not believing in Christmas, Santa Claus, Rudolph, the Red Nosed Reindeer, etc. Something like that. To so it's because they don't believe in Christmas? Yeah. Because kids sometimes ask a lot of curious questions when they're too young for it. Mm. Um, that's, that's very... Mm. Uh, that's, I don't know, that's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Well, do you think that people, like some people still do, like a small amount of people? No. Nah, not anymore. Not anymore? So... Do, do would they know that other families do this? How do they get like in connection, like know about this and start doing it? That's what I, I, that's what I don't understand. Most of them really mind their own business. They they only they mind their own business. Yeah, they don't interfere in other families' uh private doings and their private homes because it's sort how of do awkward. They learn about it like through the internet or something. Uh, like I have a how did it how did it start? Uh, what's your question, Clafo? Uh, my question, uh, in your bio, I don't really know what this means because I've been out of the loop for a bit. It says that you are a stigma male, but I don't know uh, what that I, means. I, 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 yeah. I used this, uh, I, I, I did this, uh, I took this survey a while ago, and I used the whole sigma male thing as a meme. Hmm. So it's just a joke that you're a sigma male? Or it, it's mo it's mostly mean? true, but it's also a joke at the same time. Oh. I see, I see. What would you define a Sigma male as? Like, what is a Sigma male to you? Well, a Sigma male is, uh, it's sort of similar to an alpha male, but he learns to dominate himself before dominating others. He doesn't want to dominate at the moment. He wants to, uh, uh, only dominate himself until a woman can come to him so she can take her own role and then the relationship can start. That's what I sort of view Sigma uh, male as. Hmm. So, kind of a uh, so what is your favorite food? I've seen that you listed as spaghetti. Is it still spaghetti? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm also curious. So you say about the roast game. During, have you ever like had a Christmas dinner or like any of that? Like, would you eat any of the food there? Um, I, I can't really remember too well about that. Um, I, I, I don't really remember everything too well. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I just uh, have false memories. Mm. Mm. So, so like, say you, your family uh, invites you to, like, a Christmas dinner. Back in, like, 2017 when this was going on. Would you eat any, like, would you, like, hold, withhold yourself from eating the food? That's what I... No, no, I didn't... You, I didn't, uh, withhold myself from eating... I didn't, uh refrain from eating the food. No, I just didn't remember what I ate, because I don't remember everything too well. Uh, uh, do you think your family would took part in the roast game? Okay. How, how many families do you think took part in it? Uh, well, 
Families is a general, you know, it's generalized uh, term. Well, it's uh, usually families in general, because not every family has a child. Mm. So, so, I'm still curious about this. Like, okay, so you say like, how like, what are the chances that my family would have taken part taken part in this? Like, is there a way to like? Like, what are the, like, chances, like, anybody's families would be a part of the roast game and try to eat them? Like, in the past, obviously. Well, yeah. I don't know how the chances are likely. It could be, uh, it could be, uh, I don't know, um, between 3 and 8 out of 10 or something. I don't know. I don't know the exact probability, but it's out uh, there. My question's a lot less important, so I'm just gonna drop it here for a sec. Uh... Can you make more reaction videos? Because that one reaction video to the Angry Birds rap, that one was really good, and I really enjoyed it. So I feel like you should make more of those. So yeah, but uh, I, f yeah. I felt like reaction videos were tiring to make, and all for all I know, YouTube doesn't really care too much about fair use. I I, used to, I tried to react to uh, a fight between Homer Simpson and uh, Peter Griffin, but that got blocked by Fox. Uh oh. Um, That's a shame. How do you feel? What I I seen you used to post like some games on the What's your what, what? What did you say your favorite video game? Is? Um, uh, I know this is like an out of the park question. My favorite game I played on my channel was uh, it, it is Minecraft. But before Minecraft, my favorite game was Gran Turismo Four. Huh, that's that's cool. What do you like about Gran Turismo and uh, Minecraft? Gran Turismo, be it the first, second, third, or fourth game, is actually a pretty cool game to play. It's because you can pick any car you want, drive it around the any racetrack for a time trial or for a free run. And Minecraft is uh, fun because you can actually build anything you want in creative mode in Minecraft. Do you still play Minecraft? Yeah, every once in a while. I haven't got to it too often, though. Mm. What were you going to ask, Bino? Uh, I was just gonna ask, um, I was wondering where you got, um, the 3D model of your, uh, Fox OC. The 3D model, which one, um, the Team Amorous? Um, I can, uh, I can, have a I picture can drop of a photo of it. This one. Oh, wait, I got that from Hero Forge. I customized it in Hero Forge. Is Hero Forge a game? No, no, it uh, Hero Forge is a website where you customize your own uh, character or persona, so it's like a small little like uh, figurine. It's like a miniature. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I just it reminded it up. me of a really it. funny part from one of your videos. It, really, it made me laugh really hard. This part. Yeah. I showed that the, was why did you did you recreate it or something? Cause I don't no. Uh, he, he just put LMAO. On that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Um, can you, like, what are, like, more the facts of the, like, do you have, like, more proof of it, like, to show us of the roast game? Well, yeah, I can, I can, uh, I can presumably, I can, uh, sum it all up in a series that's uh, premiering in December called The Roast Game of Final Look. Oh, so you're going to take a final look at the roast game? I'm yeah. Oh, that, uh, that actually... Why? So... Why did every single family stop doing it after 2007? Wouldn't you think there's still like some strands of it left? No, like, no there's really no I, strands of it left. They just went back to ham and turkey uh, spontaneously. That's... Mm. There was no motive for the spontaneous change? It's just a change I mean, of heart, that's it. Had a change of heart. So... Did like did this just like did it die out but on its own? Like Yeah, they, it, like, it died out on its own. How did like families get into it? Is what I'm wondering. Like, how does it start? Is it like a tradition that like they've like had it previously through their family, through generations and generations, or it's like uh, they like joined this like organization? I'm very confused about how all these families like figure it out and like, do it and start start committing it. It, it was around just I one generation. Think it's just a cheaper alternative. My idea is that just a cheaper alternative to food. Is that why? Is yeah, it's yeah, it's mostly an alternative because uh, people really are uh, really bad at uh, properly spending their money when it comes to uh, preparing for Christmas, and especially when it comes to Christmas dinner. Yeah, that's it's because it's mostly an alternative. Yeah, that's right. 
Mm. Well, I'm kind of curious. Why would they eat their own children just for a cheaper alternative? For some people, just aren't in the right place with money. Is that the only reason? I figured. I mean, for me, I feel like you know, my parents wouldn't just eat me because they they don't have enough money. That's just can your you, take. Can you explain more on it? Because I'm 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 not trying to like debate you. Uh -huh. anything. I'm just generally I like I'm very curious about this. I want to learn. Well, it's either because they're too poor to buy ham or turkey, or is it because, or, or either that, or it's because they don't b really believe in Christmas and they ask too many questions, which question their religion and their faith in Christmas. And I think that's about it. That's all I have about it. So it's more of like the deviant child gets eaten and stuff. Pretty much. Like that is that is very strange yeah it is very strange you said you you came up with this idea during like an argument or something like that yes what was the argument about was it what was it about it was it was the it was the will tester hypothetical what is the what is that it, it starts as this well the roast game is pretty simple first ask any family member what do you what do you what do you eat as a christmas roast they would presumably uh say the obvious meat choices but then you ask them who or what do you think is special and they say children that's the hypothetical in a nutshell pretty much mm. so by that you took that they might eat me eating the kids or something yeah th i took that hypothetical to heart for the the debates before i got banned from debate.org because of a whole shit storm but trolls and stuff why'd you get banned yeah, i saw i saw an image you posted of the death toll of the of the um oh you mean the, the one on the deviant art yeah, yeah oh yeah horrible mm. So, you, why'd you get banned to trolls? People? Yeah, because so trolls you? pretty much uh, mass flagged my uh, debate account and it just closed. That's that must be very annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. Do you, do you debate a lot? Like, I, is I don't really like debate, debate as much anymore. Mm, you, you used to debate a lot. Yeah, but I find debating in general pointless. Yeah. What, uh, can you give me some more topics to put used to debate about, or do you not really remember? I don't really remember all of these many other topics. Yeah, I don't really remember all the other topics. Hmm. So, <clears throat> what is, uh, the next video you're working on, Jim? Like, I'm working on a... What is your next... I'm working on a couple of reversed videos. Um, one of them is uh, a forwards and backwards instrumental version of Nick Jr.'s do, 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 do video uh, that someone requested me to do and then the long play mm. why did you decide to start a YouTube channel do you remember well it's because I was interested in uh, starting off with a with an original channel like this yes I, I started it because I felt like it was a great idea to start a YouTube channel mm. Wait, uh what kind of YouTubers are you interested in? And what kind of YouTubers do you watch? I usually watch, um... Other content other than, uh, the VHS and, um... Furry content. I used to... I used to watch furry content on the regular back in 2018, but I sort of got tired of it. So I watch anything other than those, uh... Varieties of content. So I'm watching, uh... Uh, other things, like... Stuff about... Uh, Irish people trying something. Um, hmm. YouTube drama, Wings of Redemption. Sometimes when I feel a little comfortable, I I usually watch or even sleep to uh, Cutting Soap ASMR. I, like that's a bit of a recent trend. Yeah, I think my mom watches that too. Um, why? I think you said, like, you're not too much in the furry community anymore, even though you still are a furry. Yeah, I, I still am why a furry. Why is that? It, why, why do you not, like, why do you have your limits? What, what's... Well, it's because the, the shit surrounding Kiro the Wolf and the drama that surrounded it and the, the fact that the community has mostly rejected Kiro the Wolf for his shady actions towards his own dog, which I find reprehensible. Oh, so he was, he was, 
Who's Kuro the, the wolf? Is that one of your friends? Oh, not one of my friends. Oh, hell no. That was never one of my friends. It was just some other uh, YouTube furry uh, content creator that had a huge uh, load of controversy in late 2018 for... Uh, uh, Skype logs with other Susadists like Snake Thing and photo evidence that could be taken into account or could be taken with a grain of salt of him abusing his own animals. So he abuses his dog? In what way? Presumably in a disgustingly sexual manner. Something I find absolutely disgusting. It almost makes me want to throw up. Is that that's why you drew the line with the furry community? Yeah, that's where I drew the line. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see that. That's that disgusting. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Uh, so this is a YouTuber. Hmm. Uh, I forget you said something a, uh, a while ago. I was gonna ask a question about. Uh, what do you think your favorite TV show is? What do you like to watch? My favorite TV show? Well, I hardly get to watch TV anymore. It's because YouTube is sort of uh, taking that place as an alternative. But when I used to watch TV, um, I thought SpongeBob SquarePants was my favorite TV show. And my uh, one of my favorite episodes of SpongeBob was um, the the first one of the entire series. The very first episode. Yeah, favorite? yeah. One of the one of my favorites. There was Graveyard Shift, the one with um, the crane. Mm. Um, so, if I, if, I, uh, if I could ask a question, um, yeah, I was ahead. just wondering, um, have you heard of a, of a certain game called Friday Night Funkin'? Uh, it's it's a re recent indie game, popular, uh, blew blew up recently. Oh, I've heard of Friday Night Funkin'. I haven't really got used to. You, you I haven't really it? got to playing it yet. Oh, you haven't played it yet? Nah. Oh yeah. I've been a mod. Yeah. Kafu actually works on mods, and so if, if does. Have you ever heard of Among Us? He's made an Among Us mod because he's. Very, very it's cool. really cool. It's really nice. It's a really well-made mod put together. Yeah. Cool. That sounds cool. So, that's not bad. Uh, I was curious, do you receive monetization on most of your videos? No, I don't so I don't monetize my videos at all. The ads I usually get for oh. some of my videos are from copyright claims or just copyright owners just putting ads in my videos. So you don't get any money from your YouTube channel? No. So why do you do YouTube? Like what's the motive behind it? Do you just like to entertain people? Yes, it's it's it just, it's just to entertain people, it's a hobby. Mm, that's very interesting. I like that. Uh, so your most popular video I see is DreamWorks Studios logo history. Uh, how do you feel about that video, and why do you think it got so popular? Yeah, because, uh, because people, uh, like to see reversed logo histories of, uh, certain companies like DreamWorks, and that really sort of took the spot. And I didn't expect that to be, uh, at, to get as viral at all. I was surprised when it first reached a million views. I was celebrating at that point. Uh, one thing mm. I gotta ask you, yesterday when I, um, I was looking at your channel, I was like, I like his content, but, uh, I want to follow places, so I checked, it doesn't seem like you have a Twitter. Do you have one? I don't have a Twitter. I just, uh, I don't. I don't really like Twitter. It's because it's mostly a political cesspit of uh, leftists and some alt right wingers. So, what what are your political like points? Like, what uh, are you like more on, like a right or more on the left? I'm sort of a sort of a mix between very very slightly very slightly center right. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a liberal. I'm not a socialist. I'm not a I'm not a fascist by any means necessary no i'm not by not by that stretch i'm just a so, sort of a moderate centrist that sort of leans to the right only by a, a tiny percent so i noticed that you do get a lot of like uh backlash on the the roast game is a fact statement why why do you think that is i why do people it's because of like, it's because of past dramas of 2018 and 19 and recently i get backlashed on every time i talk about either the maricopa county audit or trump you know in general or criticizing trump because there's a lot of trump sycophants and uh um stands out there what is uh 
what <clears throat> what kind of things do you think about Trump? What what is your opinion here? Um, my my opinion on Trump has changed a lot over this past year and 2020. I think how he did with this pandemic was very irresponsible. Um, he really screwed this up. Our economy really went downhill. And then by the end of 2020, he kept crying that he somehow still won even though he lost. And nowadays, most Republicans uh, recognize that Trump lost in 2020, I guess. Um, if, if I could once again butt in about Friday Night Funkin. Brian, how would you feel if someone were to make a mod about your character, your OC? That would be amazing. <clears throat> you would like a, a mod of your character? Sure. I don't mind. So, you make a lot of reverse videos. What What do you think the appeal is to these? Why do you Why do you make these? Videos. Because my audience likes to listen to uh, people or uh, characters speaking backwards. It's mostly for entertainment, and some of it's for nostalgia. Mm. Yeah, I can kind of get that. So, um, <laughs> what kind of nostalgic feelings would you feel um, for listening things reversed? I'm just curious. Sometimes I get, sometimes I get spooked. Sometimes I get. Uh, um, nostalgically entertained. There's some music where you play it backwards. It sounds uh, nice and soothing. I can understand that. Yeah. Wait, wait, give me a sec. I have a question, but I gotta go for a sec. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll just ask this question real quick. Uh, do you have a fursuit? Like, well, because I've seen a couple of videos. I used to have a, a few. I used to have a fursuit head, but then after a while, it sort of got old, and some of the felt sort of, you know, came off with the the glue, the the hot glue. I used to glue it onto the 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 main foam fursuit head, so I just got rid of that one. I've had it for so long, mm. and the felt just didn't really, you know, stick too much anymore. So your fursona, why why have you kept the design so like so? So this like it's been like pretty much the same throughout the entire time you've had them. Is there like a reason for this, or do you just like the design? I just like the design. Hmm. So, what is your next big goal for YouTube? What is like your next big subscriber? What, what, my next, next big, big subscriber model? goal is uh twenty thousand subscribers. Uh, my lifetime goal would be a hundred thousand. Hmm. That's very interesting. Uh, what do you think is the weirdest video you have on your channel? Well, What's a video you're like most ashamed of? Um, the weirdest video is um, I don't I don't really th I don't really think I have a weirdest video or anything too weird outside of just reacting to my old content, doing challenges like. Uh, Bean Boozled Beans and the One Chip Challenge and Thousand Listerine Strips. What's your okay. least favorite I saw that video where you ate those um, jalapenos. That was so freaking epic. That was so... W what, yeah, which one with the jalapenos? You ate some jalapenos, ghost pepper. No, 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 pepper. no, 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 no I'm at... It was the ghost pepper. I'm at the Carolina that. Reaper one. Freaking epic. Yeah, yeah. I could not take how epic that. How how did you withstand that? Like those are pretty. Spicy. Yeah, it took a lot. It took like 10, 15 minutes to recover from that uh spiciness. It was really hot. Uh, well, I, it it took me a while, and then I just started drinking water a little bit when things sort of cooled down. Hmm. Me, uh, I cannot uh, be spicy. I, have a food. I would not be able to I have a do that. Uh, so, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, minority? Minorities uh, on, uh, depending on what thoughts on my like. What are you? I guess uh, your thoughts are just minorities, which, like in America, like uh, I guess black people, African Americans, and like uh, Asians, Latinos, all that. I think they're uh, they're. I think they're just. They're, I think they're Americans as well as we are. Uh, all all men are created equal from the like remember yeah. what the constitution said at the first beginning mm -hmm. uh, all men and women are created equal yep 
Yeah. Do you think you're gonna upload any more uh, video game let's play or it's like videos on your channel? Probably in a month or two, until I can get around playing a new game or something. What games have you been playing? Uh, a few. Have you been playing? Any? I've I have been playing uh, a game earlier this year called Among Us. I've I I played Among Us be oh, yeah. between September last year. No way! I love Among Us. Among Us is so freaking epic. Oh no. Okay, he's kind of crazy, but uh. Yeah, yeah we, Klopp we was a big fan of Among Us. He plays Among Us a lot. If you, if you look at uh, if you look in an interview chat, you can see his work on why he likes Among Us so much. Yeah, he loves yeah. Among Us. It, it, we call it a problem. I it's call it really an addiction. Just, yeah, he's very into Among Us. Yeah. So why do why do you like Among Us? Well, I I used to like Among Us, but then it got tiring and the. Uh, the fact that I get voted out for no reason yeah. sort of uh, made me uh, like the game less. No offense. Yeah, that's very annoying. I gotta say, I was I playing. Was and, uh, okay. Uh, so I was playing, and I swear, people just they vote you out for no reason, and then like when it's so obvious when the imposter kills you, and they just forget about that, and they just start talking about other things. And I find that very annoying. I did uninstall Among Us once because that happened. Happen to me. I don't play it too much. I usually just play it with Clavo and a couple of his friends. Uh, so that's the only game you played recently? Well, I have played other games like Forza 6, Minecraft, and Goat Simulator. So you're a big fan of cars? Mostly, yeah. What would you say your uh, your favorite type of car is? Like, what's your favorite vehicle? Um, my favorite vehicle is um, I think I have a uh, I I don't really have too much of a favorite vehicle. I have a favorite type of vehicle, and it's the sedan slash coupe. Mm. That's cool. <laughs> So Yo. I just want to say uh, thank you for coming on here today. When do you think you're going to be uploading the final look at the the roast? Oh, uh, it's premiering in late December, from the fifteenth all the way up to December twenty fifth. Okay. Finally, mm. the roast game is fact. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty much. Why did you come up with that specific slogan for the roast game? Uh, the roast game is fact. That's the slogan. Oh yeah. Um, I came up with it because it sounds sort of you know in encouraging to investigate on the truth of the statement. Yeah. That that's why. The roast game is fact. You can mute him if you want. Uh, so yeah. Thank you for coming on here today. It's it's been a pleasure interviewing you. <laughs> Yeah, it's a real I like honor. learning about the the roast game. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Take our eggs. We're not gonna stop. Yeah. Clap. So, clap. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Don't know why. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for coming on here today, and it's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can talk after this and be friends. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye. Let me explain the second point. Statistical inconsistencies and inconsistencies in real life are as effective at distorting worldviews and even views of traditions as a whole, traditional Christmas dinner is completely tarnished as a whole. If you couldn't and can't quantify, let alone properly factor in, either turkey, ham, beef, or roast chicken into the caloric slash consumption stat equation or in real life during the roast game era, why should the entire plate Though as said many times before, Thanksgiving is affected by waste, lack of ability to absolutely estimate consumption stats by using over-the-top estimations that make no sense, but there is a way to calculate the average cost of a Thanksgiving dinner in current year, just like the American Farmer Bureau Federation has been successful at doing for over 30 years. And just as easily as the last, 
the only ways I could find Christmas consumption slash turkey slash ham stats that even came close enough to being just that is only from the UK where the data is either hidden, completely inaccurate, or doesn't even directly apply to us at all the same way it does to the UK. I mean calories, I mean consumption statistics in general, because it's simply their statistics and their statistics alone. Australia, on the other hand, has their own statistics. So does Denmark, so does any other country in the known world. And the reason for America and Canada being so lackluster with this is because we steal statistics from the UK and supplement those statistics as our own. Because we use bullshit estimations to hide the fact that we don't have any statistics surrounding Christmas dinner that actually count as statistics in America and Canada, and we use it so smugly, reassuring that no one will check up on them. At least, no one with a fucking IQ of 123, or at least not someone with at least half a brainstem. You can't just vaguely say that it applies to us in Canada, too, without being specific. It doesn't make any sense. There's no consistency. Let's go into the third one, shall we? It tarnishes the history of Christmas dinner in a way where it's impossible to set up an absolute timeline in a sense where we can truly pinpoint the accuracy of said timeline. Because phenomena like the roast game, food waste, fake news Christmas consumption slash tradition statistics and articles, and misleading misinformation making it impossible to document its innocence. It puts everything you knew or believed Christmas Christmas to be about in total jeopardy. It's almost like the whole turkey slash ham slash chicken slash roast beef tradition was never absolute, or in other words, it's been a total pack of lies this entire time. I will go over Christmas lies in a totally different three episode segment in the distant future. Let's get into the fourth. When all else fails, we just abandon old traditions that were never absolute in the first place, regardless if there was ever a reason to do so in the first place or not. There doesn't have to be a reason why they do it, they just do it anyway. And finally, before I recap this video, the fifth point. All of these other four points can amalgamate into the absolute absolute decline of traditional Christmas dinner in both America and Canada. When this post-roast game tradition dies, the post-roast game era dies. Let's do a short recap, shall we? Number one, the best way to predict the future is look to the past. Number two, these traditions were never absolute. Number three, all of this hurts the history of Christmas, let alone Christmas dinner tradition in America and Canada. Number four, all of this puts everything you knew or believed Christmas to be about in total jeopardy. Number five, people will someday abandon these traditions as if they never mattered to shit that were never absolute in the first place. Number six, all these things can result in the death of Christmas dinner tradition in said two countries. Number seven, when these traditions die out permanently, the post roast game era does as well. And finally, number eight, I am Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. Have a good day, everybody, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Brian sent me a virtual text message saying that David Dudickley your time is up after this one. I know he's surely not angry with me this time like he never was. 1. The entire founding reason why Christmas was celebrated for the first time in 336 AD was nothing but a lie. 2. Jesus likely never existed and was also likely made up by the Romans who never wrote a word about him. Three. Any evidence that would suggest the existence of Jesus Christ, like any other sensational finding, could possibly just be a forgery. 4. The first Christmas was truly never about anything. 5. They likely ate the first Roman Christmas dishes slash dinner in 542 and onward. Considering the 206 year long gap slash plot hole. 6. During this 206 year gap, these mild and rainy winters, and each of these 205 Christmases, they either had rotten meat, fish, 
nothing special at all, or nothing at all. 7. Roman soldiers slash citizens ate meat regularly, but mostly ate wheat and grain. 8. There was nothing really special about Christmas at all in the first place, let alone the dinner part. 9. At least the poor had something to gain by making it throughout these long and uncomfortable winters. 10. We learned that in Christmas cannibalism mythology. A. Santa Claus was an ancient Greek cannibal. B. Rudolf the red-nosed reindeer was a cannibal as well, for eating his own kind in the cold, cold winters. C. Jesus Christ's Last Supper was about cannibalism, in a literal and symbolic way. I am the text-to-speech bot David, filling in for Detective Brian Mullins the Fox, while he is on his virtual summer vacation. Signing out for him for the last time, he will be back with the predictions for 2022. Episode 1, The Statistics That Are Mentioned in General Episode 2, For the Mentioning of the Impact of Lying About What You Ate as a Christmas Roast which harms the ability to not just collect data, but set a precedent that's very similar if not identical to Thanksgiving. Episode 4, Why Stealing Other Countries' Christmas Dinner Statistics Isn't the Only Thing That Is Affecting Data Collecting and Is Also Everything Else That Would Contribute to the Death of Traditional Christmas Dinner. Episode 14, Recapping the entire fourth segment in a definitive way just like I did before. For the purchasing of hams or turkeys, for Christmas in the post-roast game general and otherwise, when the demand is low, the prices are low. If there is a high demand, the prices rise. Now, due to the economy's inflation issue, things in general are becoming slightly or a lot more expensive than they ever were before. Thanksgiving for example, to adjust for inflation, turkeys generally rise in price a piece due to high demand, that leads to consumption on or before Thanksgiving. But for Christmas on the other hand, there is literally no way I can calculate prices for turkeys or hams in a graph in America or Canada, during the roast game era and afterwards. Even if there were, there's one financial plot hole, the demand is low, but the prices are higher. Something that even preked the global pork shortage. A huge issue known as food waste. The waste of food at such magnitude as this, also takes a huge toll environmentally. Turkey and ham have the advantage and edge for Thanksgiving, and during the roast game era, they are non-existent in data. Oh, and I wonder why, wink wink. I have also established the falsification of Christmas's supposed airtight and absolute history of the holiday and the dinner tradition as well. Thanks for watching the first post-roast game documentary. I am text-to-speech bot David, filling in for Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out for him. He's too busy with IRL shit.